Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here. We had some issues yesterday with the servers and currencies going away, but they are now fixed. The hotfix is now live with some changes. We have one more week until the Empyrean Foundation comes. There have been some leaks out there. I will not be discussing those, but I will ask you guys below in the comments if you want to see about those later. And all in all, it is a weekly reset, so I've got a couple things to cover. So let's dive into the deep end. So here we go. The first thing that happened yesterday was when many people logged in after Hotfix 2.7.1 was launched. People checked their currencies and they were very sad because as you came in, many people were missing currencies and most of them typically seem to be the most valuable ones that we have. I was missing about four Ascendant Shards, so more than half of what I had. Every upgrade module I had was gone. I was missing about 20 Enhancement Prisms. Even random stuff like Charges of Light, Tier 3, and Unstable were gone. My little lore from the uh, Pigeon and all the Quarters of Time stuff is gone. And then I was even missing probably, I don't know, 175,000 Glimmer. So lots of things were missing yesterday, but that has been reinstated. They basically took nine hours, brought the servers down, and brought back a game image that was before the patch went live. So anything from 8.30 yesterday and after, if you did get play for a little bit, that didn't count. So you might have to do that stuff again. But that, they have fixed that one, and patch 2.7.1 is out. So let's talk about that and see what we have for changes. All right, so for update 2.7.1, now that this is live and correctly live, um, we've got some issues that have been fixed. We've got some changes to some weapons. Um, so here's basically a brief overview. I'm not going to cover everything. You guys can go read it. But a couple high notes that I do want to point out. If you're working on a Pit of Heresy Flawless run, there was an issue where people would die transitioning between zones. That has been fixed, so that should be a little better. A couple other issues for frame rates and performance have been fixed. Garden of Salvation, they fixed some performance in the Sanctified Mind Encounter. Also, visual indication. When a tether source is like on or off, which is nice, so it's not much of as much of a question. And then also in the Nightfall, they changed the number of completions required for the weekly challenge. Just brought it in line, so Adept is three required, Heroes two, and then Legend takes one. So, pretty simple and straightforward there. You'll notice in the director, if you go to just pretty much any destination and you have like open fire team slots, it's going to say add member. It's going to just be a way to go directly to your roster if you're trying to add people into your game mode. Just kind of a quality of life change there, mostly. When it comes to weapons, we've got changes to both. The big ones are Breakneck, the Gambit Auto Rifle, and Hardlight. So two Auto Rifles getting a little love. Breakneck is brought back into reasonable territory. It's not game-breaking, and I'm, I wonder, as Cross did a great breakdown, he had uh, damage before and after from Shadowkeep when it got nerfed into the ground. They brought it back up into reasonable. Just Rampage time 3 still seems a little bit low. He even said it as well, but overall, it's definitely back in playable status. The other one is going to be Hard Light. That is one that you guys definitely have probably tried to use, and it shakes all over the place like crazy. I saw pictures and stuff on Twitter where this thing is much more stable on mouse and keyboard and console or controller. So both seem to be a bit more viable. So a couple auto rifles you might consider using. When it comes to armor, they've had a couple of fixes that they've been working on. Uh, Worm God Caress and Winter's Guile. Those were nearly game-breaking by, like, equipping and switching and keeping a buff, and that stuff's been fixed. They fixed a, uh, they've fixed they changed up some Dawn mods, so Telesto's not breaking things, and certain things are stacking properly. So, a couple general perks there. If you haven't noticed those, not a big deal. Combat, there were a couple random things that I didn't even know about, like Titans could throw a throwing hammer off of a wall, catch it, and heal themselves, which is kind of amazing, but awesome and kind of broken. So that's fixed, and then also... If you were standing in a Well of Radiance with Roaring Flames, Solar Weapon damage was increased, which was unintended, so that thing's fixed. Uh, Sunbreaker Titans Mortar Blast, it's their melee, that's bo boosted by 70% in PvE, so a couple cool things there. Bounties and Pursuits, the biggest one for many of you still trying to get your Izanagi's Burden, which is that amazing sniper rifle that you can stack four bullets. The Black Armory Rare Bounty has been significantly improved. Basically, they state players that complete all weekly and daily bounties will acquire a Rare Bounty within five days. So, if you have five days to kind of work those daily bounties, do them consistently, you're guaranteed at a point that you will get some of that stuff. A couple other issues with that have been fixed as well. And then finally, a couple lore little uh, crazy things and just some general fixes to most random game stuff so that is patch 2.7.1 it is now live currencies are back where they were so that's good so let's see what we've actually got to do for this week so for this week in destiny 2 we already got our bastion many of us did if you haven't got it yet definitely go visit saint 14 it's that kinetic fusion rifle the quest is live so you can go do that one the calendar basically states so but it was available last week due to all the corridors of time stuff 
Next week is when the major final piece on the calendar, called the Empyrean Foundation, actually goes live. It pairs along with a new boss in the Sundino, Inotom, Oblivion's Triune. So not entirely sure what that's going to entail. There are some data mine things that have been out there. If you guys are interested in spoilery data mine stuff, I could do a video about it if you are curious. The title would be completely spoiler free and the thumbnail would as well. So if you want to know about it, I could potentially work on putting one together, but I would definitely try and keep it spoiler free on the channel. So no notifications and no thumbnails ruin anything for you in case it's already not been spoiled for you yet. But if you do want to know about any of that stuff, let me know in the comments below and I can see about putting that together. But Empyrean Foundation, the last thing we don't know, the one thing that I have been hearing around in rumors is the fact that we need about 5,000 Fractaline to contribute towards whatever this is. Whatever we're building, whatever we're doing through Saint and all of this stuff, it is potentially going to be asking for about a 5,000 Polarized Fractaline donation. Now that sounds like a lot. Now I have upgraded all of my obelisks to max, so I've got all the mods and everything there. And then on top of that, I still have 5,000 left over. I've also been acquiring these things, and since I've been playing that much, I still have quite a few more to go through. So my advice, first thing, is if you don't have about 5,000 Fractaline, I would get to working on that as best as you can. What are your ways that you're potentially going to do that? Well, one is going to be all your quests. So when you go to... Um, the tower obelisk or wherever the obelisks you need to make sure you're picking up the tower bounties make sure you're picking up saints daily bounties as much as you can also try and make sure that you guys are um buying this currency fractaline skimmer it's going to give you a quicker chance to just get some of that fractaline from activities like crucible matches gambit strikes all of those things will at least have that quicker chance to drop it now i've used this it may take three strikes to get it or three Crucible matches, whatever it is, but it is going to at least start boosting that stuff so you get it a bit more frequently on top of your Obelisk buffs. So either way, try and do all you can to get as much Polarized Fractaline that you can, because next week the Empyrean Foundation begins. We don't know what that's going to do, but I definitely it's the last major thing on the calendar besides the Crimson Days PvP event. So really, it's the last thing we know for the season at this point that is going to have any piece related to story, lore, the game, world changing or not, so... Try and get ready, get as much Fractaline as you can so you can be ready for that. For those of you roaming around in the game while you're working on bounties and such, a couple things to keep in mind. We'll start with the Vanguard. Vanguard strikes are going to be on an arc burn this week, and your order yesterday was Grenadier, today is Brawler, and then tomorrow is going to be Heavyweight. It's going to go in that order throughout the week, so you're going to have a triple Grenadier week, and Arc Singe is the one to match. Your Nightfall ordeal this week is going to be Hash Ladoon, uh, Fighting Hash Ladoon, so it's the Scarlet Keep on the Moon. And then over here for your Nightfalls, your trio, you've got Strange Train, which is going to be the one that gives you a chance to drop the Braytech Osprey. It's the rocket launcher some of you guys will need for one of those titles. Uh, I'm blanking on it, but it's the one that you have to complete all these collections for. So, old school title, but definitely one that you may need. Will of the Thousands. It will give you technically a strike exclusive, but it's a transmat effect. You just come in like the worms all. Not a big deal. Broodhold, no strike exclusives at all, which is kind of sad. Um, because it's the PS4 exclusive. Kind of a cool strike, but really nothing to earn in there. So, not much going on for that one. Gambit, we know there's not too much going on. But if some of you guys are trying to farm things like spare rations or certain weapons in here, like Nightwatch I've seen has some really cool rolls. Remember, you got the Reckoning, which potentially has some good stat rolls for armor. So if you're looking for good stat rolls for a build, spending some time in Reckoning as much as you're not as much a fan still is a way to do it. We've also got Gambit and Gambit Prime, your usual three matches for your powerful. If you still need powerful, maybe you just haven't been playing that much. Who knows? Crucible this week, you do have Mayhem. So if you just want to go blow off some steam, blow some stuff up and use your super a lot, this is a good way to do it. Mayhem's always fun. Good way to get just some Crucible in, some PvP, have some fun. Don't take it too seriously. If people have shards of Galanor and if they have Blade Barrage, they get it all the time and a lot. So if you're a hunter, go have some fun. If you're anybody else, just try and dodge those Blade Barrages. They're everywhere. Other than that, you've got Crucible. Um, your other playlist is going to be Countdown. Iron Banner is gone right now. And everybody keeps waiting to see if anything else will be showing up on this map. But again, that gets into spoiler territory. So for now, we'll keep it quiet. The Flashpoint is on Mercury, so if you are working on the Flashpoint, uh, just again working for that challenge, you can. Also, don't forget the Sundial. Play a few matches in there because you could still be working on those God Rolls. If you aren't up to level 92 on your Season Pass, try and get there because remember, level 2 will give you the double end perk on any weapon that you pull from Sundial of the uh, Time Lost weapons. So those are going to give you a lot quicker chance because you can pull the weapon like three to four times and then you can also get double rolls on the end. So your odds of getting that roll that you're looking for go up quite a bit in these last month or so of this season. So you've got about five weeks left. 
six-ish, five and a half, somewhere in there, to try and get some of these god rolls of weapons before this season ends, and likely the sundial activity is going to go away. But also remember, this is a way to get some polarized fractaline, so go get a few god roll attempts in there. Also get some fractaline in there, and you'll probably get a few more fractaline as you go. Well, that pretty much does wrap up activities for the week. It is quiet right now because we already got the Bastion quest. Next week is the Empyrean Foundation, so try and get as much polarized fractaline as you can. And the final thing, I just want to cover what is in the store this week in case anything piques your interest, you know it's here. Final thing we've got is the store. So, of course, you guys know your emotes. Super Bowl is this weekend, so the spike emote is actually pretty cool. Definitely fitting for you guys. If you're not a fan of football or anything, cheer on my 49ers. Hopefully they can pull it out. Chiefs are going to be a tough opponent, so it's going to be a good game, I hope. Just hoping the 49ers can win. Both Cognito and I are fans. You got the Bloodline Ornament, the new ornament for Bastion. It's a cool gun either way, with or without the ornament, so pretty cool looking weapon. Down here for your Bright Dust purchases, we've got the Vex Gate Transmat effect. Kind of cool sound effects and everything, so definitely a legit one to consider. Also got the Saints Invocation Shell, or Ship, I should say. Uh, it takes shaders pretty well, so depending on what you like messing with, shaders take on it pretty well. It's mostly just kind of like a silver bullet flying through there. And you've also got lore, so if you guys want to pause it, I'll show you guys everything it's got there. But all in all, pretty quick. Saints Invocation, just a cool looking ship, kind of a unique one. Face Palm emote is out here if you're looking for a Face Palm. There are many fitting moments in this game for one, so if you need it, it's pretty cheap if you got some Bright Dust, but again, if you're tight on Bright Dust, save what you can. I've just hoarded it for way too long. Final pieces for Bright Dust are going to be the Galloping Knight. If you're a Monty Python fan, I feel like you have to get this one. It's not required, but it is definitely a hilarious emote that they have this in here from Monty Python. I think it's in the Holy Grail, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the coconuts, that's too damn funny. We've also got Saints here as well. You've got the Vice Shell. Guiding Light is a good thing to have. If you've got a ghost that has Guiding Light, it's going to be that 10% experience all the time. That's You can't ask for much more than that one. Whether it be for bounties that you turn in, activities that you do, it's going to give you more experience towards your Season Pass and your Artifact. So having a Ghost Shell that has Guiding Light on is what I would recommend pretty much all the time. The perks after that are up to you, but this one right here is pretty solid just because it has Guiding Light. Now, if you have other ones that work better, I have one that has Guiding Light, Speed Demon, and Combo Detector for planets. It's that old Lunar Shell. For, it's amazing, kind of all the things I'd ever want. But at least Guiding Light, if you don't have one of those, it's going to help you having that on pretty much all the time. Couple ornaments, you got one for bad, bad Omens, Chaperone, and then of course the Year 3 Wraith Trial Robes. Nothing too fancy here, they kind of look um, kind of leathery or almost cloth, so not the fanciest set right there, but that's up to you if you are digging that for your character. That pretty much wraps up this week though, so Imperium Foundation next week, as I said, Crimson Days starts the week after that, it's the Valentine's PvP event. Now, as I said, there are rumors and data leaks and mining going on for information. People freak out when they, like, figure out what the reward is for Bastion and the, like, quest coming, and then they data mine stuff, like, the next week. So, it's a weird conundrum in the game right now, but if you do want to know about that, I have seen some of the things that are out there just because Twitter didn't unspoil it for me, so I've seen what it is. If you want to know what it is, let me know. Um, if you are interested, I would keep it spoiler-free, both in thumbnail and in... Um, title, so you wouldn't have to worry about that too much. But if you have an interest in that, let me know in the comments below. If you don't want to see it at all and just wait for surprises, totally fine too. So hopefully you all enjoyed this week. I know this was a longer one, but a lot of things happened. We got a hot fix, we got a weekly reset, and the foundation coming is an important one to try and get all the fractaline you can. So hopefully you all enjoy your week. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, cheer on the 49ers and the Super Bowl if you don't have anybody else in that game. Uh, but thank you all very much. You guys have been awesome. The channel keeps growing, so I can't thank you all enough. You guys can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and apparently everyone felt like showing up in the end. So have a great one, guys, and I'll see you soon.